So it's project time once again for the Camaro. Um, this pretty much all started off with me ordering some new wheels. Uh, I've got some 8 inch wide rears, 7 inch that came with the car. Torque thrust twos, not really my style, and a uh, 255 tire in the rear, I think kind of looks silly on a muscle car. So I went with a new set of wheels that I'll show later. Um, in the seven weeks that I've been waiting on these wheels to come in, <laughs> I had a little time to uh, play on the keyboard and realize that with a more spoked wheel, the um, kind of stock four wheel disc conversion that's on it currently is gonna look really cheesy and uh, just not kind of the look that I'm going for for the car, more of a pro, pro touring look. So I ended up doing a little homework for a week and a half and decided on some Willwood parts. Um, I figure if I'm gonna go with not doing full chassis and all that stuff on it, keeping it more of a, a original cruiser, I might as well put some nice brakes on it. Um, so I'll kind of show you a couple tricks, the parts that I'm using, kind of discuss why I picked them, and also give you some hints on how to get the larger 13 inch front rotor combination, the whole kit with the rear 12.19 inch um, for the same price as most people are offering the uh, front and rear 12.19 inch uh, rotor combination. I think I'll start off with the star of the show here. Uh, this is the front Willwood Forged Narrow Superlight 6R brake kit, uh, part number 140-12271-DR. Um, I got that from the Summit uh, eBay sales for $1,423.93 shipped. Um, that was, as far as I could tell, pretty far below uh, minimum advertised price. I don't think that's actually the price on their website itself. So that was through eBay. Um, this is June 5th, so whatever, uh, 2023. So if those prices do change, it is what it is. Get your deals while you can. Uh, this kit comes with everything you need. You know, these just freaking awesome 13 inch front rotors. And uh, you'll see why I really am excited about the black-red combination with them. They do offer it with different colors. You can custom order black, you know, red, yellow, whatever. I went with red, obviously, because my car is red. Um, one thing I really am pretty excited about is instead of having the built-in bearing races and everything, you can actually just replace the rotor. I did go with the one-piece, um, not only because it's $800 cheaper than the billet aluminum two-piece rotor combo, uh, but just for the simple fact that everything here is all the same between the kits except for the rotor itself. So if down the line I'm not happy with these um, or just they get wore out, warped, whatever, all you got to do is just buy the rotor. You're not getting really any discount. The rotors themselves are about that $800. So that was kind of my thought process on it. I don't road race my car. If you are doing road racing, you're going to want to do you know, the upgraded rotor and probably not do the rear brake combo that I'm doing any e either. So this is kind of the mix between the best quality, especially in the front, but also budget friendly package that I put together. So it just real quick, it uh, comes with all your brackets, your sliders, your mounting hardware, the new, just awesome looking billet hubs. Um, and then just the star of the show, which their uh, champion red is almost the same color as victory red for anybody kind of comparison wise that was one thing i didn't want my reds to not match so that is the front um if you're looking at the uh more um baseline low on the totem pole that's the dynalite pro series which is actually what i did for the rear um they offer these as a kit with the front and rear combined, you know, they're both the 12.19 inch rotor, one piece, whatever. Um, but with the sale that Summit has on going to the 6R, it just didn't make any sense to not run the bigger 13 inch. Um, this kit is, again, the rear, there are two different kits for the F body. Um, there is a staggered shock setup and the uh, just rear shock setup or rear caliper mounted setup. So just double check, if you've got a 68 or 69 Camaro, you've got multi-leafs, you're gonna have the staggered, so make sure you get the proper kit for it. Um, their part number on this thing for the staggered is a 
9315DR. I picked that up again from Summit for $998, um, just under a thousand bucks, which is pretty good deal. Again, it comes with a really nice integrated park and brake setup. Um, this is a four piston rear, pads, hardware, all that good stuff. Um, kind of my thought process on why I went with two different size rotors is I really spent a little bit of time looking. I compared, I'm familiar with the uh, C6 Z06, you know, the big brakes, the Brembos, um, and I also had uh, Gen 2 CTSV. And with the 19 inch wheel combo, what I ended up finally noticing is that even on the stock form, the front is about an inch bigger, so that's about matching. And then if you look at the calipers on those cars, the fronts are six pistons and the rears are typically four piston. So I'm kind of going for the same brake feel as my CTSV or my Corvette. Um, obviously it's not gonna handle and everything else, but if it can brake as good, that's, that's a win in my books. So those are the two brake kits. I'll show you two other pieces. I'm gonna take a break just for a second and actually uh, throw a couple slideshows in of the part numbers kits so you can actually write it down or whatever if you're interested in kind of mimicking this project. Another piece that I was definitely going to be doing, um, if you're gonna be doing big calipers, big brakes, you're going to have to go with a bigger master cylinder. Um, with the 13 12.19 combo that I have, the six piston, four piston, um, the, they recommended a, a one inch bore master cylinder proportioning kit, which is this just awesome looking piece. Um, the whole kit part number is 261-13269-BK, that's the black finish. Um, I picked that up off eBay as well from Skid Auto at $377.89. Uh, comes with everything you need. Uh, this is the one that I'm not entirely sure on. I cannot believe that we're going to actually be able to use our original hard lines. So when I'm installing it, I will definitely show that process pretty much in, in detail to kind of let you know what you're getting into if you're doing this by yourself. Um, another thing that I was thinking while I'm there, if we're going to be pulling the axles, uh, just do a gear change, gear lube change. I got limited slip additive, you know, got a limited slip in it. And then just pop some new axle seals in while you're there. It's just cheap insurance, you're pulling it anyways. The last piece that you'll need, well not the last, second to last. Um, with the new parking brake setup, you need to get their universal um, parking brake cable kit, which is like a cut to fit type situation. Uh, their Willwood number is 330-9371. Um, doing just a little homework, trying to figure out where to find it. Uh, the thing, I wanted to say they're about $140 for this kit. Uh, there are eBay knockoffs, and I know, shame on me, but I would, went for it, uh, $46.55. These things look identical. The hardware is the same, everything, so once again, China coming in to ruin the day, but I'm going to give it a shot. And if they turn out to be garbage, then shame on me. And if they turn out to be good, well, shame on me too. But <laughs> I still save like a hundred bucks. So uh, the last piece that's not here is the actual um, brake hoses, which connecting obviously is going to be different than the calipers that are on it. They're stainless braided hoses. Uh, they have an F, F body kit, which are 14 inch. They call it the flex line. Uh, their part numbers are 220-7056. Um, you can get those pretty much through Summit or anywhere. They're right at 70 bucks. Both front and rear was 69.25 shipped. So those aren't here yet. I'll show you those when we come in, make sure they fit right and everything. But I'm gonna get to uh, tearing down the original brakes which I believe are right at 11 inches, which you wouldn't think would make that much difference, but I'm gonna say that it's gonna be pretty dramatic. Um, I am gonna go ahead and put the brakes on it and then put these wheels back on just for comparison. I did take a picture outside that I'll do just kind of a side-by-side -side so you can see them, but front and rears, 
they are, well, I'll measure them again, but I'm pretty sure that they're right at 11, which I just don't like. They don't look big enough for an 18 inch wheel, I don't think. And just like that, we have a spindle. So now I'm gonna start laying out some of the parts um, after I bag and tag and put all this together since these are pretty much new still. I'll throw them back on the eBay and see if I can't offset some of that $2,900 that uh, I spent on the Willwoods. So uh, before I take the calipers loose and stuff, it's gonna be a mess. So I'm gonna actually start mocking all this up before I crack the system open. Um, but everything's pretty much out of the way to start putting the rotor on, which I'm terribly excited to do. So, <laughs> give me a few minutes, we'll start laying some parts out. And it did not disappoint. <laughs> it is a dramatic difference between the sizes of these two. I mean, it's it's going to be a night and day kind of situation here. So, we can pick this dude up. Uh, <laughs> and even the look of the caliper is going to be cool. So yeah, it's, in my opinion, gonna be totally worth it. And I think there might even be a little weight savings to be had at this uh, whole combo too. So these are awesome. Quality, fit, the instructions are super easy. There are a bunch of different options for um, spacers, different washers you gotta put in. Depending on what spindle you have, if you got a drum spindle or the uh, disc spindle, which I have, so just follow your instructions. I'm not going to get too into that. Um, the couple things that I did notice, uh, one one super super cool feature, which is kind of silly that I'm that excited about it, but they don't have the pound on caps. Thank God. Uh, they've actually got a threaded screw on, sealed O-ring to keep your grease in, and you don't have to sit there looking like a clown pounding your dust cap on. Love that. Um, Besides having basically everything you need to put this together, I did notice there are two components that are missing. The first is going to be, just think it's a little snug on the studs as you can tell. The spindle nut, it does not come with a spindle nut. Not sure why. Uh, it came with the spindle washer, but no nut. So you're gonna to have to reuse that or locate one. Uh, the way that this bracket bolts on, which I didn't actually final assemble yet, is easy, straightforward, comes with a through bolt nut, lower section, this recessed Allen, cool. Uh, you will have to locate your own front bolt for your steering arm for your tie rod. So keep that in mind as well. I do obviously have it. It's a, I believe, 7 16 But just in case, you're going to want something... Um, 7 16 hardened is about an inch and five eighths. So get like a two and a quarter inch fine thread hardened grade eight. Um, believe they're 7 16 if you don't already have brakes on your car or whatever. So those are the only two things that I've found so far that I need to either reuse or locate is just that one front bolt and your spindle nut. Otherwise, they've got everything. Uh, there is no cotter pin but I've obviously got those laying around. Uh, blue Loctite everything. We're gonna actually put some uh, grease on this. I did go ahead and pack the wheel bearings and all that stuff. Um, wheel bearing grease, I like the Lucas. Uh, I think it's like the sticky red or something like that. Awesome, awesome grease. So this is coming together really easy. Um, so far, all the parts are just super high end finished. Really impressed with it so far. Everything fits perfect. Um, I followed their spacers. To the, just the diagram for the disc spindle 
and everything lines up perfect. The rotor's centered in between the caliper pads, you know what I mean? Like, good job, Lowood. I'm gonna go ahead and do a final assembly on this, Loctite all the hardware, uh, get this side buttoned up, do the same to the other side, start tearing the rear end down. But yeah, so far, it's just a win-win. There you go. <laughs> Disassembly is pretty easy. Um, pull the axles, about the worst part of it, just getting kind of greasy. But um, definitely take a roll lock disc, clean up your mating surface. Your backing plate will bolt onto this. So you want it nice and clean. Um, I'm going ahead and, like I said earlier, doing axle seals. I always take a little bit of black silicone around the edge of the seal when I'm driving it in. Um, I've had times where I've fought a seal that's leaking, thinking it's leaking at the axle, and it's actually seeping past uh, this coating that's supposed to be some kind of miracle coating, but just a real thin bead of black. Um, if you don't want <laughs> the next person to be very happy with you, you could use gray, I guess, but I always use black. So just a nice thin coat, give it something really good to seal with, a little brake clean inside the tube. Um, should be pretty straightforward here in a second. And just Use a seal driver. Don't don't mess with it. Seal drivers are cheap. <clears throat> Anyways, the rear brakes seem to be really easy compared to the fronts, which the fronts were not hard by any means. Anyways, but with the rear, there's actually less shimming, less moving parts, so it should go together real easy. It's just another little nice thing to do. I mean, you've got you got your axle out anyways for a couple bucks. Stick new seals in it. So I'll show you the rears, what's going on. Uh, they do not supply the bolts that go through your original axle to the backing plate. Backing plates are obviously opposite of your shock location. And it's just that simple. So I mean, couldn't be a nicer setup, I don't think. They really did just combine everything to make it super clean and uh, actually really easy to install too. So I think another A plus job with uh, the Willwood products here. And it just so happens that I have hardware luckily in my shop, so I don't need to run to the store every three seconds when I don't have something that I need. Once we get this guy on, slide the axle in, rotor on, caliper on, <laughs> put the cover back on, fill it full of fluid. So I will uh, finish up the install here, let you know if there's any problems, but otherwise, I mean, this is just going together super nice just like the fronts did but even easier so it seems like this is a little easier um obviously it's a c-clip 10 bolt I know, but uh, <laughs> they still work. I'm not racing it. Um, you need to keep an eye on um, the shimming. They recommend three shims to begin with. I end up going with four shims between the caliper and the bracket. And you pretty much just wanna go for, you know, not dragging one side or the other. You know, there's a little bit of play to be had here. So not super important uh, from what I can tell. So as long as it spins decent, it's not tight on one side, you're good to go. Start at three. I bumped mine to four. It seemed like it was just a little bit freer there. So um, very simple, very nice kit. This hub adapter goes in nice. Um, it's drilled for all sorts of different patterns and 
Um, this rotor actually looks like it's for a um, half 20 stud, just like the fronts do. So my axles aren't drilled for it. I don't know if I'm gonna mess with it or not. Doesn't seem to be affecting anything. Wheel should still sandwich on there, but might add that to the things that I'm gonna do next. You know, if I get stuck with a part that I can't find or um, find a really quick shipping on a set of studs, I might just drill it out and make a match so they're front and rear since the, the fronts are the half 20. But very nice, I'm gonna keep working on this thing, get the other side done, button it up, and uh, put some wheels on it. Let's see what kind of difference this thing makes. So I was able to make the uh, original hard line for the front driver work. I just ended up rebending it um, and then shortened it, reflared it. It'll match, it'll be good to go. So cruising right along, my rear line is going to work. I just cut it off as close to the bend as I could, uh, getting ready to stick a nut on it and reflare it, and realized that <laughs> front's obvious your 3 16 rear is quarter. <clears throat> All three of these ports are 3 8 inverted. Well, you can't get a quarter line to 3 8 nut. They just won't fit line's too big. Smallest nut that I can find is a 7 16 24. So you need an adapter, which obviously none of my parts stores around here has a brake line adapter. So one more thing to uh, set me back a day or two, no matter how prepared you are and think you have everything ready to roll, there's always some stupid little part that throws you off. Um, also, well, it's not a huge deal. I'm kind of stand still anyways. Um, <clears throat> when I was doing a little research on this stuff, talking to the tech at Willwood, they gave me the part number for the 14-inch uh, braided frontline brake kits that I mentioned earlier. Uh, they did come in yesterday afternoon, and as soon as I pulled it out of the box, I went, yeah, that's not going to fit, especially with this 90-degree fitting they put at the caliper. Um, with my setup, I had to order a set of 18-inch brake hoses. It was four to five inches short by the time I actually put the hose on the caliper, bent it, and run it across the top of the axle tube to that uh, uh, junction for your rear brake line. So 14 front will work. 18 rear is what I need. Measure them if you're going to be doing this yourself and save yourself a day or two and <clears throat> get your adapter. I'll flash a picture of it. It was on Amazon, a two-pack for 12 bucks or something. But, of course, always something to hold you back a little bit. Can't master, can't bleed the master on the bench because I don't have the brake lines and da 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 da, -da. So, either way, give me time to play with something else, I suppose. So, the e-brake kit worked out pretty well, actually. Um... Yeah, this, I didn't even have to cut this ho or this uh, line at all for the passenger side. That's the stock length. I had to cut a couple feet off of the driver's side. But otherwise, this is what it looks like when it's all together. And I'm just gonna finish zip tying stuff up out of the way. But if you're interested in an easy way to route your brake cables, I think there's plenty of room to clear everything. We'll be putting it down on the ground just to see axle travel and stuff before I uh, put any more permanent fasteners and just the zip ties to hold it up out of place or out of way right now. Yeah, pretty neat kit. Easy to use, easy to install. It comes with little brackets that catch the tabs for the parking brake and everything. So you just feed your steel cable through it and then stick it through the uh, line itself cut to fit and there you have it I, mean, I got maybe a half an hour in this whole thing so far I'm pretty thrilled so after Postal Service lost my first shipment of brake lines I finally ended up getting the lines in got the master bled system all together you can see the lines worked out just about perfectly the uh, supplied 
um, seal that goes on the back side of the master fits great, seals up properly. I'm still working on adjusting the proportioning valve. I didn't want to just jump in it and start slamming the pedal hard as possible. I wanted to actually seat the pads per their instructions and stuff. So um, definitely an upgrade, positive braking, um, car stops incredibly quick. And uh, <clears throat> I also got the new wheels in, which in my opinion, that 13-inch uh, front just fits those perfectly. Went from a 8-inch uh, rear wheel to a 9.5. Went a 255 tire to a 275. And uh, the guys at Custom Offsets nailed it. They fit perfect. No rubbing, grinding, whatever. I did already uh, trim this lip all the way back to the uh, first finish screw just with the other wheels that I had to make sure I had plenty of clearance. I'm not sure if it's really needed or not, but very happy with the setup. It turned out great. Nice upgrade. And uh, I would say just a dramatic improvement from... <laughs> the stock brake set up in these fairly skinny 225, 255, 18s that I think just everybody has. So, US mags took a long time to show up, but that's exactly the look that I was going for with it. The suspension's not completely settled because I just lowered it down from the hoist. Actually, I think it's still a touch on the hoist, but... Overall, um, very happy with the Willwood products. The rear brake hoses, I would recommend going with a uh, 45 degree fitting into the caliper. They come with a uh, supplied 90, which makes them kind of tight. Um, you got your one little adapter that I showed earlier for your rear brake line. And uh, yeah, other than that, solid kit. Great brakes, everything bled really well. And uh, hopefully this helps somebody out get a screaming deal on some awesome Willwoods instead of running those <laughs> um, kind of basic late 80s single piston uh, conversion kits out there for still $1,500, $1,600. But uh, I'll try to make sure that I got all the part numbers and all that stuff in. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching, guys.